<clears throat> Ecclesiastes 3. You know, we're going through Solomon's life. He, he, he's trying to experience, trying to find the meaning of life. And this, and this, these few verses are very popular. It was a song in the 60s, early, late 60s and early 70s. And, and people are remembering, you know, it says, To every season turn, turn, a time to be born, a time to... So they took it from from this chapter. A lot of people know a lot of people know the, these verses by heart, but because of the songs, as it comes, it's important to sing sing the Bible because then you could remember it. It'll be in your heart. All right, it says this: for for every for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. All right, so there's a time for there's for in every season there's a time for everything. There's, and he's gonna explain what this everything is. One. A time to be born and a time to die. You know, there's times where people are born and times people are gonna die. You know, <laughs> that's gonna be our life. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. You know, you gotta plant and then there's times a harvest come. You know, it's just what time does. A time to kill and a time to heal. You know, there's a time when you gotta kill. You know, the whether it's war or somebody did a, a ugly crime that's worthy of death, there's a time to kill and there's a time to heal. You know, there's a time where where things uh, look bad, but you got to bring healing. There's a time, but it, it, there's a season for it. It's not all the time. A time to break down and a time to build up. There's a time that you got to break down things. You know, got to destroy things. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's Maybe it's something in, in, that you have. There's a time where it has to be broken down, down, but then there's a time to build up. You know, there's a time and say, okay, now it's time to rebuild. You know, we it's been torn down. It's time to to build it back up again. You know, and it, and it could apply to your life. You know, you know, sometimes you've been broken down so bad that you got to say, you know, I, I got to build up again. I, this is you know, I, this is the time. But that there's that time that comes, a time to weep. And a time to laugh. You know, there's a time that it's okay to cry. You know, there's some painful things in this life. It's okay to cry. Don't be one of these um, super Christian, supposed super Christians that feel like I should be joyful all the time. The spirit of the Lord is He gives me joy all the time, fills me with gladness. No, there's a time where you should weep. Even Paul said, "Weep with those who weep." There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. You know, life is not always miserable. Some people think that this life is horrible, and some people even go to the extent of killing themselves. But there is a time to laugh. There's there, there are things that you can find pleasure in. You know, don't be so um, negative that you think that life is just miserable. No, there's a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn. You know, weep like mourn, and a time to dance. You know, basically the same idea. You know. There's a time to dance, the time to celebrate. There's a time, yes, there's a time you should mourn. You know, somebody passed away. Something didn't, you didn't get that job. You didn't get that opportunity. There's a time to mourn, but there's a time to dance. You know, there's a time to celebrate. There's a time to say, you know what? I, I'm glad, I'm excited. It's a time to, you know, to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. Right? So it's talking about physical stones, but... You know, there's a time where you gotta throw away the stones. You know, you're trying to build up a property. You're trying to clear it up. You gotta get it out of there. But then there's a time you gotta gather stones together to build. You know, and some and metaphorically, you know, there's a time you gotta cast out certain things, certain people even. You gotta cast them out. But then there's a time where you gotta gather them together. Say, so, you know what? It's been long enough. Let's try to, you know, come together. A time to embrace. And a time to refrain from embracing. You know, there's a time where you got to say, you know what? Let's let bygones be God, bygones. Let's embrace. But then there's a time where you got to say, no, no, no. What you did, it's it's not it's not good. I got to refrain from embracing. That's what the Bible says. You know, a time to seek and a time to lose. You know, sometimes you got to seek something. You got to pursue something. You got to search for it. But then there's a time you got to lose some stuff. You say, you know. You're gonna you're gonna lose. <laughs> Sometimes you might lose it by accident. There's a time you're gonna lose it, but there's a time that you gotta seek it. A time to keep and a time to cast away. 
You know, then, <laughs> I think of like old clothes. You know, you 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 keep clothes, but then there's a time you say, okay, I gotta cast it away. I, there's no use in it, and you get up again. You can apply this to to life. There's a time you keep. You say, you know, I, I'm gonna keep these people around me because I'm 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 gonna need them. They're beneficial. But then there's a time where you gotta cast away. You say, you know what? Now now you're not now you're not being helpful. Now now you're it's not profiting me. So I gotta cast you out. So scroll up. A time to tear. And a time to sow, you know, you know. So again, a time to to mend, and a time a time to you know tear. Meaning you gotta break it. You gotta break 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 things. Break, you know. You gotta rip it up. Is is useless. It's pointless. Is is not working. There's a time. To, but then there's a time to sow, where you say, you know what? Let, let's put this back together. Let's fix this. But there's times, you know. Not everything could be all, let's just keep sewing, sewing. No, there's a time you got to tear. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. Now, there are times where you got to just be quiet, not say nothing. But then there are times where you have to speak up. You cannot just be in the background and say, you know what, it's none of my business. There are times for it. You know, if you're wise, you know the time. A time to love and a time to hate. There's a time where, where you, you say, you know, I, I got to love. I got to, you know... That's just, you know, this is uh, beautiful, that stuff, but then there's a time you gotta hate. You say, you know what, no, this is wrong, this is off, and, and I gotta hate this. A time for war and a time for peace. You know, back then there were, back then there were wars constantly. When you read the, the book of uh, Kings and Chronicles, it was almost every year. It even said there was a, the times when the kings went to war. There was a time for war, and there's a time for peace, right? Then not everything's gonna be peaceful in the life. There's times where you're gonna war, you're gonna have to go to war, but then there's a time where there's gonna be peace. But realize that. Don't think, oh, I'm just a, I'm a believer. I'm a, I believe in God. There's always gonna be peace. No, there's gonna be a time of war. There's gonna be war with even your own household, in your community, you know, <laughs> in yourself even. But then there's a time of peace when you say, you know what, I'm good. You know, everything's good. You know, it's great. There's nothing, uh, no strife or violence going on. Verse 9. What gain has the worker from his toil? Again, if you remember in chapter 2, he kept saying, what's the point? I'm working my butt off. And he's asking again, what gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. So the reason why people do things is because God wants them to be occupied with something. <laughs> we weren't made to be couch potatoes. God purposely, you know, one of the curses of Adam, you know, when God cursed Adam, he said that you're going to, you know, pluck, pluck, you know, you're going to pluck the stuff from the, the fields. You're going to work with your hands. That was a curse. God has given that to the children of man to be busy with, to be occupied with. He has made beautiful, he has made everything beautiful in its time. You know, that, you know, there's, there's a time where something becomes beautiful. It's not beautiful. It might not be beautiful then. But in the end, it will be beautiful. It reminds me of like when Ma's doing the rooms, and when you see her taking down the 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 fan and uh, you know everything in the room, it, you know it looks bland. But you know after you paint it and put all the new furniture, it looks beautiful. There's everything he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart. So God has put men in men's heart that. Look, we're not here just to live and die. There's something God has put in men's heart. Like we we exist forever because we're made in the image of God. You know, uh, uh, this animal over here doesn't know that. He doesn't even think about it. All he thinks about is is the next meal and uh, pooping and sleeping. But God has put eternity in man's heart. That's because men always uh, want to argue whether there's a God or not, or about life and death. What is the meaning of life? An animal, a dog, they don't care. They're just, you know, where's the food at? But God has put eternity into man's heart. Yet, so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Yet, so that he cannot find out. So even though we know that there's something eternal that happened before and will happen in the future, we still can't figure it out. You know, it's just too high for us. It's like, you know... Yeah, I was watching a video about people that, that, that deny God and say, okay, God created everything, but who created God? It's, it's, it's beyond our comprehension. 
Yeah. I, 12. I perceive that there is nothing better for them, talking about the sons of men, than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. So there's nothing better for man to be joyful. Be happy, guys. You know, like that old song back in the 80s that don't worry, be happy. Just be happy. Be joyful and do good as long as they live. Do good. Do the right thing. Don't do bad things. Just do good things. Do, you know, honorable things. Do, do good. Also, verse 13, also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. Also that everyone should eat and drink. So eat up and, you know, enjoy life. Don't, don't be always fasting, thinking that this is God's will. No, you should eat and drink and take pleasure in all your toil. Whatever you've done with your hands, take pleasure. You know, if you fix the car, you know, say, you know what? I, you know, thank God I, you know, I got the understanding and, you know, got the right tools, the right parts. You know, if you painted, whatever, whatever you, whatever work, basketball, you know, you know, I, I've got an understanding. I got the right equipment. Take pleasure in it. And this is God's gift to man. You know, that's something God is giving you that as a gift. Because if he didn't give you that, you'll be depressed. <laughs> you'll be like, what's the meaning of life? You know what? Just eat and drink and enjoy the work of your hands. Take pleasure in the toil because that is a gift from God. Don't, don't think that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not holy because, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy the work that I did. And I'm eating and drinking. You know, I feel bad. Like, I'm not one of these monks over there torturing myself. No, it is, this is God's gift to man. Verse 14, I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it nor anything taken from it. So whatever God does is forever, you know. The, the the sun, moon, stars, they're going to be forever. It's, you know, I mean, the Bible says it's going to be burned up, but it's, it's more like they're going to be, you know, renewed. They're going to be, uh, what's the word? Um, when they go through the fire, they're going to be refined. So whatever God does is going to be forever. And you cannot add to it or take away from it. So that people fear before him. You know, when we see God's creation and the things that he's done forever, we fear we, you know, when I see, I remember looking at the moon last night when I was coming home from work, you know, just a sliver, and I'm just amazed. Just looking at it, I'm like, I, I see God's hands. So God made it. Why? So that people, so that people fear before Him. You know, when we see those um, things that God has made forever, we, I fear. You know, and I, even a, a a sinner who who denies God when they take a glimpse for a second, they 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 there's something in them because. God has put eternity in their hearts that says, wait a minute, I might have to give account for all I'm doing right now. Even if it's a split second, God has made it so men could fear before him. 15, that which is already has been. In other words, things that are now, they already been before. Things already happened has transact. Everything, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything that, that, that which is, is already has been. That which is to be, or that is the thing that's in the future, has already been. So no, again, <laughs> there's nothing new. You know, anything that's going to happen in the future already happened before. You know, we read about um, Hitler in, in World War II. Um, just go uh, 150 years before. Uh, there was a guy named Napoleon. Then uh, you know there was a, a Sultan of Ottoman Empire. There's nothing new under the sun. It just you know <laughs> it just repeats itself. And God seeks. What has been driven away? And God seeks what has been driven away. You know, I don't know if that has to do with the same thing, but God does seek what has been driven away. You know, God God seeks and searches. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro to seek after a man after his own heart. You know, God seeks, you know, that what which has been driven away. We've been driven away. You know, God cast Adam and Eve out of the garden. We've been driven up, but God still seeks us. He doesn't just reject us. You know, I'm done with you. And No, God, God still seeks what's been driven away. 16. Moreover, I saw under the sun that in the place of justice, even there was wickedness. And in the place of righteousness, even there was wickedness. All right? So... Even in places where you think you're going to get justice or that you think the people are right, there's still wickedness in there. There's somebody wicked. There's people doing wicked things. 
even though you you would you would assume okay this is justice everybody here is just you'll find no there's wickedness there's somebody there that's scheming or plotting and even you know in some churches or you know <laughs> you'll you'll come in and you think oh these people are are god fearing and god loving no even there Simon said that he found wickedness there's wickedness in there it might be one wicked person or wicked teaching, but there's wickedness even in there. So don't ever walk around thinking, oh, justice is blind. You know, you always see the, the statue of Lady Justice with her, <laughs> with her eyes covered. According to this verse, she might have a, the, the, the cover a little bit <laughs> up to see, you know, because she's not that blind. 17, I said in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time for every matter and for every work. So even though he saw this, he said, you know what? I see it, but you know what? I know this. God is still going to judge the righteous and the wicked. Even those wicked that are in, 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 in the places of justice or in the place of righteousness. You know, the, the leaders, the, the, the elders, the Levites, you know, the, the people that you think would, would be holy. You know what? I said in my heart, God would judge the righteous and the wicked. It doesn't matter. Because even in those places, God's going to judge them. For there is a, a time for every matter and for every work. You know, so even though they're getting away with it, there's going to come a time where they're going to, the day of rec recompense is going to come on earth and in heaven. You know, God's going to judge them here. You know, God's going to expose them here. And then he's going to judge them later on in the, the great white throne. So there is a time for every matter and for every work. 18. I said in my heart with regard to the children of, of man that God is testing them that they may see that they themselves are but beasts. I said in my heart with, the, the regard, with regard to the children of man that God is testing them that they may see that they themselves are but beasts. So God, God tests men and he tests them to the point where he, he makes them realize, look, I'm no better than an animal. When, when it comes down to it, the fate that the animal gets, I'm no better. You know, so, you know, some people like to think they're all wonderful, but God tests them. And, and, and they, they'll come to the conclusion, wait a minute, I'm no better than this dog over here. And he, and he, and he, and he expounds on it further. But he, but he, but he. <laughs> right. It says this in 19. For what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beast is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. They, are all, they all have the same breath, and man has no advantage over the beast, for all is vanity. So, in other words, he's saying, for what happens to the children of men, and what happens to the beast is the same. You know? and, and he's talking about death here. For as one dies, so dies the other. So the animal dies, and we die. So why are we better than the beast, as he says? They, are all, they all have the same breath, and man has no advantage over the beast, for all is vanity. 20. All go to one place. All are from the dust, and to the dust all return. And we're all going to die, even the animals. I, I, I know you think you're wonderful, you're special, you're different. You know, like they say now, that I'm built different. No, you're not. You're no better than the beast. Because all go to one place. All came from the dust. All came from the dust. Adam and Eve, animals. Everything came, and guess what? All of us are going to the dust again. 21. Who knows whether the spirit of man goes upward and the spirit of the beast goes down into the earth? All right, so click on 21. Who knows for, for who can prove that the spirit? So here he's saying, who knows? He, he's not certain because some people use this as a verse to say, Look, the spirit of humans go up, but the spirit of animals go down. He's at, he's he's posing a question here. He's not he's not being firm. You know, he's not saying that the animals you know goes down to the, to the dust, but the spirit of man goes upward. He's making an assumption here. But even then, even if it's true, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, you know, whether the spirit of a man goes upward or down, it doesn't matter. In the end, we're all gonna die, and even worse. It, we are going to go upward. Our spirit is going to go upward and we're going to be judged by God. But the animal spirit goes down to the earth. If we're going to take it literally, 
and, and say it's not a caution, that means when the animal dies, it ceases. And that's that's good because, you know, they're not going to get judged. <laughs> and look, there is no judgment day for animals. <laughs> the animals do what God created them to do, and then they, they stop existing. But us, we go upward because we got to give account for what we did. Go back. Let's go. Okay. 22. Oh, okay. 22, last verse. So I saw that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his work, for that is his lot. For who can bring him to see what will be after him? So I saw that there's nothing better than a man should rejoice in his work, like you said earlier. Just rejoice in what you did. Yo, know, you're, you're gonna die like an animal. You know, we're we're no better than animals. You know, we're gonna return to the dust. But you know what? Just rejoice in your work. Rejoice in what you're doing. You know, don't, if you're a mother, rejoice in it. If you're a, a student, rejoice in it. Whatever you're doing, rejoice in it. Don't be miserable. Or else it, you will go crazy. <laughs> Just rejoice in the work that you're doing. For this is his lot. That's your possession. That's what God has given you. You know, don't, <laughs> this is what God has given you in this life. So you won't get depressed at the, the, rea the sad reality that you're no better than a beast. Just rejoice in your work. For this is your life. Who can bring him to see what will be after him? In other words, don't, don't worry about the future. Just rejoice in the work of your hands. Don't worry about the future. Just be busy. You know, there, there's some people that, and you know, that they have so many problems in life. And I see it. You know, they, they, they just work. They work overtime. You know, they work six days a week. Why? Because, you know, that's their lot. God has given them that as a distraction. Because if... If they decide to say, you know what, I'm just going to be home all day, they're going to be miserable. They're going to be inundated with the, the problems that are facing. But if you're always busy, you won't worry about that. This is your lot. Because if not, you're going to be thinking about, man, I'm no better than this dog. <laughs> all returned, all came from dust, all going to return. It's going to be depressing. But this is your lot. It says, so I saw that there's nothing better than a man should rejoice in his work. Rejoice in it. Not just work. You see, you know, I'm, I'm doing good, you know, because trust me, this life is hard. Sometimes you just need a distraction just to get away. And God has given you work to keep you occupied and not worry about, look, <laughs> I'm no better than this animal. Because if, if you really contemplate, you might want to go rope or do something because you realize what's my, what's the purpose? God is giving you that as your lot, your possession. And then click on 22. Let me see what the word lot is. I mean, it means inheritance, but let me see. For there, for this is, it says, that is our lot in life. Let's see, rejoices. It just says lot. For this is his portion, right? Or his heritage. You know, so God is giving you that. So we'll end there. Like I said, the, the book of Ecclesiastes is kind of uh, hard. and it's, But you know what? I appreciate it. Because I'd rather be told how it is than... You know, there's a phrase called nowadays blue pilled, where they blue pill means basically people tell you what you want to hear, not not what you need to hear. They'll tell you some illusion and, and they'll they'll give you platitudes, you know, to make you think like, oh, you're gonna make it. But some is being real and raw, saying, you know what, this is how it is. <laughs> this is how it is, and it's tough. But but there are points where he, he gives us some way to deal with our sad lot. And this is a chapter he's saying, look, be busy, eat and drink. Yes, I know you're no better than an animal. Yes, you know, you look at your work and you realize it's vanity. But you know what? Just eat, drink, enjoy the work, enjoy it. Because that is what God has given you. You know, and that's a way to cope. <laughs> that's what they call it. Uh, that's a way to cope with what you're going through in life. Or else you will go mad. Or else you will get depressed. Or else you will get suicidal. So just focus on your life. Eat, drink, enjoy life. Don't be miserable. Don't be cast down saying, oh, it's, uh, it's over, so I'm just going to, you know, that's it. I'm going to end it. No. Enjoy. Enjoy. Eat, drink. Rejoice in the work. Work. <laughs> Do something. Keep your mind occupied. Or else you will go insane when you realize I'm no better than an animal. So I want to end there. Anybody got a question, observation, concern? You know?